I have back on the back shelf uh, a volume of beautiful um, words of the prophets bound in, in leather, yeah. and yet we now have LDS.org, don't we? Oh. And we can go and we can type something oh. in and get this myriad of amazing information about a concept right at our fingertips. What a blessing. So if we needed to study a concept, like any one of these, knowledge, intelligence, light, truth, you could spend hours just finding more and more insight into any one of those words. And then we need to reason principles. You know, what is really going on here with this word? What does it really mean? And not only that, what does it mean to me? Why is it important in my life? How does this apply to me? Again, this is, you can see the four-hour method in this, can't you? You know, this relating to yourself. And so in a formal word study in class, we'll have the students write a formal definition, their own personal definition. What does this word mean to you? in your own life, and make it personal. And it's powerful, it's really powerful. And we do several of those throughout the year. Um, I have yet to assign a formal word study in family home evening to any of my children. <laughs> I don't know if it would go over very well, but the process we have done, not calling it a formal word study, but we have had the chance to research different things, and it's fun. And that's, that's the truth about learning, it's fun. And especially if we do it together and our children can catch the joy and we can ask questions, then it's unifying and it's, it's joyous. So in family home evening, how could you do a word study? Any ideas? Or if you had to prepare a talk, what would you do? Anyone, ever, Mr. Anderson, have you ever done a word study in family home evening? Some, uh, not like you have. Uh, I mean, as you said, probably not in a formal way, pulling out the dictionary. Although we do have an 1828 dictionary that I use a lot in my personal scripture study, and um, there's, an, there's an online version of it as well that has almost all of it, probably 95% of it's kind of the regular words. Uh, but it's, it's interesting to notice that the word study process is probably followed often by brethren who speak at general conference. So, for example, Peter F. Uchtdorf gives a whole talk on hope or creator, what it means to be a creator. And you have to think he must have gone to the dictionaries, the Bible dictionary, the regular, right? Because they often quote them. And then they'll cite other words of the prophets. So they start in the dictionary, they, they look at what the scriptures say, what is God's providential view of this word hope, what have other prophets said about hope, and they reason some of their own principles, their own personal definitions that they give to us, and it's inspired. Every general conference, there are amazing lessons that are based on just one word or one phrase that are expanded, right? And so it's very much a prophetic, uh, revelational way of study, both personally and as a family, and we give talks in the church and other formal venues. Thank you. Um, I actually did this once, and, and it is a lot of work, and so when I get busy, we, you know, it's hard to do all the time, but it was very interesting because my children were more engaged. I found the 1828 dictionary definition online. We don't have the book at home, but you can look it up on your computer, and we started with that, and then I um, picked some quotes from LDS.org, and then I said, okay, which... Apostle, do you want to hear a quote from it? And I would just pick a name and I would read what I had written. For and uh, we would talk about that. And then at the end, I let each one of them say, um, I think the one we had talked about was actually traps and snares, because we were talking about the traps and snares of the devil. And how does he get you, you know? And then uh, I did have one example I'd written down about beaver traps that they used to use to catch beavers to make those top hats. And um, how that's really hard on the beaver, you know, he doesn't like it and uh, usually doesn't get away. And then I let them kind of relate and say, is there a snare that you feel like, you know, the Satan uses on you? Or are you proud or do you feel like you have a bad temper sometimes or whatever does he, does he you know, use to trick you? And they all had something to say, so it was, it does draw them in, I think. Thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. Um, just 
knowing about these and knowing that we can use these methodologies will give us a lot of tools in our toolbox to be better parents, better teachers in primary, relief society, wherever we end up having opportunities to serve. Um, yeah. Was that another hand? Yeah, just one more comment about this. I, I've heard teachers here at the school have talked about how word studies can help consecrate us, consecrate our hearts. And I've wondered why that is. And come to understand that it's because we begin to see the words the way the Lord sees the words. And we see those words and those terms, how they relate to us. There was one of our international students who wrote a senior essay every every year our seniors write a senior essay.
connect with what my kids are doing. To, yeah. I was like, that, there was great power. And, and, yeah. and when you, again, focus on the word and those meanings become so deep, it enhances the whole experience. That's wonderful. I hope you're all getting all this down on your notes here. These are wonderful ideas. And I hope that you can see how these these methodologies that you may you know originally say, oh, they work in the classroom, but they really work in life. They're based on eternal principles of, of acquiring knowledge and intelligence, light and truth. And there is joy associated with participating in those processes. Elder David A. Bender said um, that, that studying the scriptures topically is good. Studying or, or studying chronologically is good. Like he said this last general conference, studying it thematically, kind of by topics, is, is better. And looking for patterns, you know, and making connections is, of course, even more mm -hmm. enriching for us. And as we try to raise children, both in our classroom and, and elsewhere at home, of course, um, maybe one of our key indicators of the quality of their scripture study is, can they talk to us about words deeply, and can they make patterns and connections? And so word studies, as we have PPIs with our children, personal interviews with our children, might be a good, good discussion about, you know, are you uh, asking them to do this so they stay out of it at home, that's not awesome. just in the classroom. That's great. Um, you know, I love that Mr. Anderson brought up the idea of connections, and I think we're probably done, aren't we, at 2.30? Let's wrap up in one minute. Okay. Ms. Beckwith expects us in three minutes. Okay, so, so my final comment is this, that I love making connections in my classroom. I love making connections between the top timeline and the bottom timeline, between the literature that we're reading and the timeline that's going on in history, what was happening in your family at this time. I mean, there are just so many connections. And they all really go back to the hand of the Lord. What's the Lord doing to bring to pass His work at that particular time, in your particular situation? And when they, uh, when all of us can see that, we will be strengthened to be, become even more useful in the hands of the Lord. We'll realize that the Lord, this is a scripture that we memorized last year, that the Lord knoweth all things from the beginning, where for, for he prepareth the way to accomplish all his works among the children of men. For behold, he hath all power unto the fulfilling of all his words. And thus it is, amen. That's from First Nephi. And they love to memorize that, and we recited that often, but... It's so true. You see the hand of the Lord, and you see it in the big picture, and then when it comes down to the very minutia of our own lives, we see that we are definitely uh, blessed, that the Lord knows us, that he knows what we need, and we can be reminded of that if we um, just remember to do the things that we've been taught. And the scriptures and the words of the prophets, we, you know, we learn about that from the time that we're young if we attend primary and Sunday school. But these methodologies that we incorporate here go so well, hand in hand. They really are one and the same. It's just learning. And learning the Lord's way, which involves seeking the Spirit and, and having truth revealed to us. But we have to exercise our agency to take part in that process. And so being able to participate in creating a notebook or doing something active, celebrating our learning or whatever it is that we do will help us to, you know, even draw the spirit into our lives even more. And I'm so grateful for that. I've experienced that on a personal level many, many times.